Welcome to our webinar on virtual annual meetings. I'm David Prang and with me as always is David Fields. Without stating the obvious, we all know that this year has been different than just about any year before. Associations have had to figure out ways to operate and running their annual meeting is one of them. This webinar is designed to provide you with information on some of the available meeting and voting platforms that are available to use should you need to hold your meeting virtually. As a quick reminder before we start, USBC is requiring you to hold an annual meeting for the 2021 season. It can be either in-person or virtual. If you're doing an in-person meeting, please of course remember to follow all state and local government and CDC guidelines for gatherings, including masks, social distancing, and capacities. Also, the season doesn't end until July 31st. We know many of you hold your annual meetings in March and April traditionally, but you've got plenty of time to hold your meetings, but you're gonna to wanna to be prepared either way, whether holding it in person or virtually. By this point, many of us have already been involved in virtual meetings of some sort and, and recognize they come with their own sets of issues. But if we prepare ourselves properly, we can minimize any problems that may arise. Let's refresh our memories with some basic etiquette reminders that you may wanna remind your people that are involved before you get started. You're gonna wanna make sure that your webcam is eye level. Uh, you don't wanna get the up the nose view or anything that may be less flattering. Uh, look into your webcam or at the monitor and maintain that rather than swiveling your head around. Check and make sure you have good lighting in the room. A lamp with the shade removed behind your computer screen works the best. Uh, you don't want to be backlit and create a shadow on your face. And dress properly if you can. If you're using this as your uh, association annual meeting, you may even want to be wearing your association uniform. Uh, we've all seen those videos of, of people who were not properly dressed and something happened. So might want to remind your people to be ready in case that happens. And remember to monitor your mute status. You're going to want to unmute if you're asking or answering a question. And if you're on your cell phone, be mindful should you decide to uh, go wandering around the house, uh, possibly to find yourself in a delicate situation that, and it's broadcast uh, to all of your meeting attendees. So just be aware of your surroundings as you're conducting your meeting. All right, today during the webinar, we're gonna cover the following topics related to preparing for and holding your annual meeting. We're gonna discuss different platforms. We're gonna take a brief time to discuss meeting preparation. We're gonna cover the required elements of a USBC annual meeting and of course, execution of that meeting. And you see now here on your screen, there are quite a few popular meeting platforms with a variety of options and functionality and availability for your association to choose from. We're going to briefly go over each one and provide some basic information about each. We will not be explaining how each of them, of them work specifically. You'll have to do those comparisons, as we said, and figure out what is best for you. And that will be up for your board to decide. Each one has a lot of different functions, and we're going to start covering those now. Okay, the first one we want to cover is Microsoft Teams. Teams has become one of the more popular meeting platforms as of late. It's part of the Microsoft 365 family of products. Teams offers chat and video conferencing, file storage, and application integration. The free version of Teams includes the following. It has unlimited chat messages, built-in online meetings, and audio and video calling for individuals and groups, and it has a maximum of 60 minutes per meeting or call with a maximum of 100 participants. Now the paid version varies a little bit, but usually that's something more suited to larger businesses or corporations and, and they pay for that. Also, please note here that we have included the website links to each of these platforms so that you can do your own research more easily. And as always, we'll be sending out a copy of this presentation after it's done. GoToMeeting is an online meeting and desktop sharing video conferencing software package that enables the user to meet with other computer users, customers, clients, or colleagues via the internet in real time. Um, if you've attended any of our conference calls or webinars over the past couple of years, uh, you have used GoToMeeting. We've used it pretty regularly. 
there's a 14 day free trial available with full functionality. Another option is the GoToWebinar Lite, which gives even more functionality and participants and starts at $20 per month. Also from Ring Central, there's Glip Pro. It's a free, unlimited, easy to use solution that combines video meetings and audio conferencing with team messaging. Meetings can fit up to 100 participants with an incredible 24 hour time limit. Uh, we do not recommend that you conduct your annual meeting over a 24 hour time period. Uh, we'll go into that later, but you're gonna wanna be a little bit briefer than that. Um, you can also use such features as emoji reactions, virtual backgrounds, closed captions, and more with Glip Pro. All right, Uber Conference is one of the newer platforms and it's very similar to the others. It has voice and video conferencing. There's no downloads, it's internet-based, so all you do is send a link to the attendees. It does have a free version, but unfortunately it only allows for 10 participants in 45 minutes. 10 participants probably isn't gonna do you any good for your annual meeting. But the paid version, as you can see there, gives you up to 100 participants and five hours of meeting time for $15 a month. The next one is going to be Zoom. You know, Zoom outweighs all the other platforms for the free version. The free version has a raised hand, a private and group chat function, an active speaker view, which makes it easy to see who's talking and helps you to know who may have made a motion or seconded a motion. Uh, the free version only has a 40 minute uh, limit on meetings and there is no polling and voting feature on the free version. However, the paid version has all of the same functionality that I just mentioned, but also gives you the ability to record meetings. It has the ability to go to breakout rooms and it does allow for polling and voting in that platform. And this is what we're using here today. We'll remind you several times a day, but to answer the question, how do we choose? You know, the best way to choose which one is right for you is to, to go online, check out the free trials or do the online tutorials. Again, uh, each association is gonna have different needs. Uh, you'll need to weigh all the factors when you decide which platform to use. That's gonna be the price, uh, the number of people that you'll, that you'll need to have uh, for attendance, and then your voting software, whether it's integrated or one of the other uh, applications that you can add in. We'll, we'll talk about that some later. Uh, you could possibly want some chat functions and different things. So you'll just have to check them out and decide for yourself on that. We're gonna start talking about meeting preparation next. Uh, some of the important tools for success are shown on this page and we're gonna quickly go through each one uh, and as it relates to your annual meetings. Okay, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to remember is to study the administrative tools for that platform and definitely run a test meeting or two utilizing each of these tools. You may also wanna create yourself a, a review or a cheat sheet so that you've got some of the uh, specifics about that platform available in case you run into any issues. The next one, of course, is to, as I just said, uh, be sure you run some mock meetings uh, with everybody who's going to be, be involved in the administration of the meeting. Go through the roles, the entire agenda, any visuals, the presentations that you're going to be using, talking points, et cetera. Everything that is part of it, make sure you know how it works with that platform. Do a test recording too if that platform allows for recording and test out the voting and polling tool. Do at least one mock meeting. We always suggest more than that, but do one and then make notes as to what you might need to change, what might need to be fixed. Then do another one, maybe bring some different people in so that you can have a different point of view. And as always, we, we can't stress enough, practice, practice, practice. It's gonna make everything go much smoother that way. Now visuals, you know, think about what visuals that you wanna be using uh, with your presentation. Are you gonna use a PowerPoint presentation like we're using here today? If you do, keep the text to a minimum and use images that effectively represent the topic. Also, don't use too many images or words. Don't make it too busy because it distracts from people paying attention to what's being said. Also, 
Be prepared to use screen sharing for your presentations and documents. You might want to show your financial reports or your meeting minutes or a list of proposals or your slate for election up there. Have those queued up and ready to go so that you can switch to it uh, when you need them and, and much more smoothly. And as always, of course, when you're doing your practice meetings, David and I are both available to, uh, to attend and give you uh, some of our opinions and, and feedback on what you're doing. Yeah, another thing that you're gonna to wanna to consider for your annual meeting is the invite system. And we'll, we'll go into a little bit more detail later about this, but it's, it's going to be imperative that you use this because uh, you will need to verify the membership of anyone who's attending. Um, we all are aware that membership is down this year and you could have some people who had uh, traditionally attend your meeting, but they may not have current membership. So you're going to have to have a procedure in place to, to make sure that anyone who's there and voting, uh, especially with the voting aspect of it, is eligible to do that and they have to be a current member. So you're going to want to send out an invite uh, to the meeting and then once you get an RSVP, you can verify their membership and then send them the link to your meeting, instructions on how to log in and other things that they may need to be. Uh, and you know, encourage them to be online a few minutes early so they can get uh, any technical issues they may have out of the way. Um, especially with states, uh, you know, you have your delegates in place for that and only registered delegates were, are gonna be allowed to vote uh, at a state meeting. So while you may have uh, members in attendance, then you're gonna wanna make sure that, that you have um, your, your delegates in place so that they can vote. Okay, let's talk a little more about the invitations and registration. So associations should send out an email blast to all the members. Now remember, USBC bylaws require that invites be sent at a minimum to the league secretaries and all board members. Post the invite on social media or your website, whatever it might be. Be sure people understand how they need to register. Is it going to be through an email to the association asking to register, or do you have a link to a service like Eventbrite or Ticket Tailor or Brushfire? Those are all free services that provide registration for events. If you're gonna have them register through email, don't use somebody's personal email address. First of all, you don't need that out there all amongst the world to know. Create a specific email on Yahoo or Gmail they're free, they, you can go on there and do it. Something simple like annual meeting at gmail.com would be perfect in this kind of a situation. And only send out the actual meeting link once they're registered and you have verified that they are a current member of the association. As the second box said, and I just alluded to, verifying memberships. You know, it's a simple reminder. You guys all know that for your annual meeting, of a local, you have to be a current member. Of course, states, you have to be a current delegate of the association in order to vote. This year, as Dave mentioned previously, with memberships down, it's gonna be imperative to verify that everybody that wants to attend your manual meeting is a current 2021 season member. Some people might have not be bowling league this year and still wanna purchase, uh, still wanna attend your meeting, so they're gonna to need to purchase membership before that meeting to be eligible to vote. When you send the meeting link to the invitees, send an instructional sheet or some information as uh, letting them know how and when you want them to sign in. We highly recommend that you sign in 15 minutes prior to the meeting start. That way, if there's any issues with video or audio or the software, they can get those resolved and not delay the start of the meeting for others. And then finally, a lot of you have probably heard about Zoom bombing. You know, this refers to the unwanted disruptive intrusion generally by internet trolls into a video conference call. Now, it's not happening as much as it was about a year ago, but there are ways that you can uh, eliminate that possibility and the problems. Each meeting and each of these platforms comes up with a meeting ID. Um, think of it as your meeting's phone number. Basically, don't give it out. Every one of these has the ability to set up individual meeting IDs for the attendees. So set up your, your uh, meetings to, to give individual IDs, and that can be done in the meeting setup section. Always use a, plat a password for your meeting. 
Again, keeps people out of the meeting who don't belong there or aren't registered. If you're using Zoom, they have a great feature called the waiting room. And what that does is anytime someone is going to join the meeting, a pop-up screen comes up for the host of the meeting and it says something as simple as David Prang wants to join the meeting and then you can click yes or no. So that's a great way to make sure you know who's joining and also a good way to take attendance as they start joining the meeting. When you set the meeting up, set it up to where the audio and video is disabled for the meeting attendees. So you want the attendees to be on mute as they come in, because as we all know, there's a lot of background noises that happen, dogs barking, TVs, phones, uh, friends, spouses, uh, all the other noises that can happen that are very distracting during a, me during a meeting. So in addition to asking your people to keep, uh, keep their phones and their, their computers muted, you can set that up in the setup section. And then finally, turn off the screen sharing ability for everybody but the meeting's host and the co-host, the same thing. You don't want somebody sharing their screen and you're looking at their email or the pictures of their grandkids or Facebook or whatever else they might have on their computer. Again, take disrupting the meeting. So turn off screen sharing for the meeting attendees. So once you get your basic preparations done, uh, it's important to remember a few things that will keep your virtual meetings running smoothly and effectively. You're going to want to pre-assign roles. The meeting's going to have uh, need multiple people involved in administrating it. You'll need someone to monitor the chat or hand raise functions for questions, comments, and feedback, etc. One will need to be keep running uh, the minutes for your meeting. Required, as this is a formal board meeting, uh, minutes will need to be approved at the next meeting uh, that you'll conduct. So you're gonna need your minutes to be taken. Uh, you'll need someone presiding over the presentation and flow. And keep in mind that roles may change during the meeting. So you look back on the fact that you'll be practicing and running mock meetings. So if someone is taking minutes, but then they have to give a report, then you may need someone to take over the minutes part of it and different things. So just be aware that your roles may revolve a little bit during your meeting. Also, Robert's Rules and Parliamentary Procedure. Uh, you're going to want to uh, conduct your meeting under that. Uh, it's an official meeting. It's, Robert's Rules is one of the governing documents of any meeting, and of course, of USBC. So you're going to want to recognize that during your meeting. Uh, start early. Uh, speak to the point and the technique of answering a test question via the chat. Uh, we've done that in a lot of our presentations where we ask you to log in with your name and your association that you're representing. Uh, so we'll know who's attending, and the, but then also so you'll become uh, familiar with how to utilize uh, what's available for you during in the application. Make sure that all the participants are both familiar and comfortable using whatever they're going to need to do in that virtual meeting platform. Um, if you're taking polls, and votes, and ballots, you're going to want them to understand how to make that work on their side. And again, as we can't say enough, you know, you're going to want to mute your phones and your speakers. Uh, for everyone who isn't actively talking, and you can double check your settings for your meeting quality control. Um, this includes anyone who may be running your meeting. Uh, just as a reminder for everybody, what you're seeing on your screen are the minimum requirements for a USBC annual meeting. These are the things that must be done for the bylaws and policy. You must do your minutes, your reports, for instance, your President's reports, your AM reports, your committee reports and things, those can all be done online. They can be done by email or in person. For a virtual meeting, we suggest that committee meetings, committee reports be done via email or on your website. So they're there for everybody to see, but don't take up lots of time during the meeting. Now, financial reports must be available online and or email, and we suggest that you would send financial reports along with the with the link for the annual meeting when somebody uh, when somebody registers. If you do any ceremonial stuff, for instance, uh, Secretary of the Year or any uh, any special awards or anything like that, that's at your own discretion. Uh, the one thing we've learned over the years of doing virtual meetings and webinars and things is that the longer you go the more you tend to lose people's attention. So try to keep to the point and keep the meeting moving on. A lot of that stuff can be saved 
for a later date or different meetings and things like that. Also, this year, try to give us some insight into what the board has done in the last year. Again, with COVID, it seems like we haven't done much. And I realize that a lot of associations haven't done what they would usually do, but you've still done something. Tell your folks how many meetings that you've had over the year, how many whatevers you've done. For instance, have you done fundraisers or run tournaments or events or anything like that? What have you done to help bowling and help promote during this time? By the way, brag a little bit and stay positive. This is your chance to get out there and let your members know that you work for them and you work for bowling. You know, this year, it's very easy to have a lot of doom and gloom because uh, membership numbers are down. And I always say, don't get hung up on that. That's out of your control for this year. Let's look forward and be more positive as to what may or could or should happen next year when our bowlers come back and how great that's going to be. Also, as a reminder, you're likely gonna have people attend the virtual meeting who've never attended one of your annual meetings in person before. So keep them in mind when you're talking because you may have to explain some things that a lot of people take for granted that they because they've been to meetings, but these people don't know that. Now also, uh, we've said before, record your meeting. It's pretty self-explanatory, but understand, uh, know where that recording is gonna be housed, on whose computer or in the cloud or wherever it is, know where that's gonna be. That of course is also gonna help the person taking the minutes. Be sure that you use a video platform that allows for recording, but you still need to have a secretary for the meeting to take notes, just like it was an in-person meeting. We've alluded to this also, minimize your time. You know, the agenda will help dictate that, but staying on point and keeping the time uh, on, on on target is so important that's going to help. If you tell people that the meeting is gonna last for one hour, make sure it's done in one hour. Don't go over because people do appreciate that. The meeting host or some administrator might have to intervene during the meeting to keep things on track. So, so you just keep it moving along and on topic. Finally, for voting, verbal yays and nays can be used as normal. It's useful in improving things that aren't really uh, controversial in question, such as meeting minutes and reports. Uh, even in voting, if you have someone who's running unopposed, there's really no reason to do anything but an, a vote by acclamation. You can still do that in a virtual meeting. However, anonymous polling tools or email voting can be used for things that have uh, more important questions, uh, voting on your your member or your directors and things like that. And we're going to go into those next. Yes, as you're gonna be aware, uh, one of the most important parts of your annual meeting is voting on any proposed amendments to your bylaws and then conducting those elections for officers and directors. Um, we've discussed a little bit already, but some of the online meeting platforms have a built-in voting or polling feature. Um, that may not fit your needs uh, for the association election. Could not be enough spots available or different things like that. Um, so the multiple choice of different things may affect what you're able to do. So you may end up needing to consider a third party voting system to use within your meeting. Um, we've done a little bit of research on those. There's many of them available. We're gonna go over a few now. All right, the first one we want to talk about today is called direct poll. And they can create polls. And as you may have kind of picked up, polls is another term for voting. You can create them ahead of time or on the fly. And that's really useful for nominations for the floor or amendments to motions and things like that that happen in our meetings. They use tokens as, a, as their version of a password to vote. So this way, only the people who receive the tokens are eligible to vote. You can run the polls in the browser. It's web-based. There is no app on your phone for it, but there are add-ins for PowerPoint. Should be you, you'd be using that for your presentation. And then what happens, your voting is seamless and it's part of your PowerPoint presentation and really looks professional that way. Polls and results remain online for 30 days after the vote's taken. So that's gonna give you plenty of time to download the results for your minutes. The next one is called association voting. 
It was created as for associations. It was created for nonprofit associations to use. So it's something that definitely uh, fits in with our needs. You can vote by computer, by laptop, tablet, or phone. It is web-based again, so it means you get a link. It's similar to the others that we've discussed. You create your own polls and voting. There is no limit on the number of questions. And as you can see for that $99 flat fee, it allows you up to 100 voters. Of course, if you have more than that, you see it, goes, it gets more expensive uh, as, as the number of voters increases. Next, we have e-ballot. Now, e-ballot, there is no free version. Uh, the price is based on the number of voters, and it's a fee to be used for six months. Uh, for instance, 50 voters is $6.99 a month per month for six months. Uh, we checked 100 voters was $11.89 a month for six months. And of course, you can use it as many times as you want over that six-month period. The company uh, website says eBallot is an online voting system used to gather instant trustworthy results. Their voting software and services help you run secure votes and elections. The next one is called Easy Polls. Now, it's probably the simplest no frills version of an online uh, voting site. It is free, it has no limit on the number of voters. No limit on the number of questions. Of course, there are premium features. You could pay for those additional things like that. But it does not have many bells and whistles. It's not made to be branded. It's only in uh, text. There's no, there's no pictures or anything that goes with it. It's very, very bare bones. You unfortunately have no ability to save the results. So one of the things you would have to do while you're using this is take a screenshot of the results of your votes, uh, because that would be your record. So we have to be very careful if you're going to use that particular one. The next one is Poll Anywhere. It adds uh, audience interaction to slide decks so that presenters can deliver effective and interesting presentations. It is web-based like the others but it's also available as an app for those folks that want to do it on their phones. There is a free version and a paid version. That free version only allows up to 25 voters, unfortunately, but the paid version is $120 for the year, and it allows to up to 700 voters. And as you can see there, it does, as I said, integrates with PowerPoint and Google, so it looks very nice with, your other, uh, with, with those presentations and fits in seamlessly. The last one I want to cover here today is Mentimeter. It's an easy to use presentation software and they say it's been used by more than 25 million people. They, you can create fun and interactive presentations. It can be branded with your association logo if you want. As you can see, there is a free version but it only allows for two questions. So probably not going to be too effective for our meetings. But the paid version starts at $9.99 a month pretty darn reasonable, unlimited number of questions and voters. Again, as you can see, it's web-based and customizable. So uh, there's another option for you to use. And again, not to sound like a broken record or anything, but uh, your association and your board and your decision makers are gonna have to be the ones that make the decision and analyze what would work best for you. Um, again, each one of you has different needs and you'll need to weigh in all those factors in deciding which platform to use. And, and those factors include price, uh, the number of attendees allowed, how many votes you're allowed to take and, and different things like that. So that will be uh, some of the factors that you'll have to consider when deciding uh, if you even need to use one of these third party voting apps and integrate that into your presentations. So in summary, if you're not able to hold your annual meeting in person this year, we've shown you a variety of platforms that you could use for both the video portion uh, as well as optional platforms to use to help with your voting. Um, we'll be sending out a copy of this presentation to everyone uh, and we'll be putting a recording of the webinar on the ARC at bowl.com in a few days. Uh, feel free to watch again and share with others who may, may not have been able to make the webinar. Uh, we've covered preparation and different things that you'll need in order to get your meeting going and online and set up. 
uh, covered the required elements that you'll need to do during your meeting. And then of course the execution and how to execute and run the meeting uh, while you're online for your members. And with that brings an end to our webinar. As always, all of us at USBC are available to help you uh, anytime you need us. Please give us a call, shoot us an email. We're happy to help in any way that we can. We appreciate you attending the webinar. Thanks so much and have a great day.